Hello, so this time we're going to talk a little bit more about the switching. So here is the circuit with the low side switch. So here's the MOSFET that's the switch. It's going to switch this load up and down. So obviously as we run it, here is your square wave, you know, and you can change the duty cycle by coming in here and changing this. So let's say we want to crank this 50. And so now you see that it's on for a shorter period than it's off. Let's get a couple more periods here. Looks like that. Okay, so but now we want to take this and we want to be able to filter it. Well, here is my load that's in the line. And so I can't really filter this well with it in here. So what I want to do is I want to take this load and pull it down here and then add another switch up here. So I'm going to add in another switch. Now, this one is the high side. So we're going to put a PMOS up here to be high side to do the switching and then tie the two gates together. So I'll rebuild it. I saved it. OK, so here is the P-type MOSFET. The source is tied up to the supply. Here is the N-type MOSFET. It's tied down. Here is our level shifter. And then now you see the loads over here. So these are opposite. So if this voltage here is high, then this one will be on and this one will be off. Because if this voltage is 15, then the gate that's first crossed here is zero and this one will be open. So with these two gates tied together, they're kind of complements of each other. So this one goes on, this one's off and vice versa. So we're going to run this and see what happens. We look at the voltage here. It's switching on and off. Everything looks good. The problem is, is if I look at the current going through here. So this is the current going through all of these. Okay, so it's the same current here, same current here. So this is basically just a current line right down here. And what we see here is that I get these voltages that are like 40 amps. So this is like 40 amps going straight through. Because basically what we're doing is, is we're basically shorting when these both happen to be on at the same time, then this one here is going to short straight through these two transistors and the MOSFETs will basically burn up because, or if not, they're very inefficient. So if I look at the power here, make this a little bit longer so if I look at my power consumed here holding control this is 5 watts looking at the power here this is 21 watts so you can kind of see that we're burning all sorts of power and in this case we're burning power just in these transistors so there's 6 watts there and eight watts there because these are both on at the same time. So what we have to do is we have to make sure, and that's because of the delay between the two. So remember, there's a little bit of lag between the switching of this source and these. Okay, so in order to analyze this, I have to be able to look at these two separate. Is we're gonna take and wire the three separate. So you see what we did here is we are wiring them separate. So here is my first one and we're connecting it up to a load like this. So right here. So this is your traditional low side switch. And so this low side switch has its level shifter to drive this. Up here, this is your high side switch that goes through this load. So you see that this one's going up and this one's going down. So they have their individual ones so that I can look at them separately. So if I look at these, if I look at the voltage right here compared to the input, you see there's this lag. So if I look at the current, so this is where it turns on and then this is the lag between the two. So right now, let me put this back to this is zero lag. Okay. So you see this point and this point are the same. Okay. But if I look at the current through here and the current through there, you see there's this small region right here. 
where they're both on at the same time. Over in this region here, then this the RL is on and the RL1 is off and over here it's vice versa. But I get this small region right here where they're both on at the same time. And if they're both on at the same time, then my current is just gonna spike right down there. So I have to make sure that they're not both on at the same time. So let's add another one. Okay, so again, we're looking at this little band right here. So I gotta fix this. So in order to do that, what we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to make it fit inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one, let's just say the blue one here, and I'm gonna make this wider so that it kind of fits outside of the other one so that I don't have that overlap. We also notice that this one could be a lot closer together than the other side. Okay, so we're looking at this one. So we're gonna take this transistor here, which goes through the RL, which is the blue one, and we need to make this region smaller. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna have it be on for less of the time. So if I go, let's just start with 80. So now what you see is that it's on for a smaller fraction. So now it's easier to see. So it's off for a longer time than it's on. By doing that, I can fit this piece inside of here. So this, this piece needs to fit inside of here so that they're never on at the same time. Okay, so now when I plot these, that you see that there's an overlap here. So now I, I kind of shifted, I moved them, but now I have to shift it over. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna shift it by, let's just do a couple of seconds. So now you see that this one is never on at the same time as that one. And I got this big gap right here. Um, and this gap where they're both off is kind of a lag between the two. It makes it a little bit less efficient, harder to filter. So what we wanna do is we wanna make it so that they're never both on, but make this gap a little bit smaller. So we're gonna come in here, make this 90. And then we gotta shift it a little bit more because you see they're overlapping here, but not overlapping there. Oh, wrong way. Okay, and so now uh, we're pretty close there. That you see there's a little bit of overlap there, but just a little bit. So for this experiment, we're going to run it a little bit less. So now you see they're both down there. And then this one right here, they're both down there. So now there isn't any overlap between the two. Now that we made sure that there's no overlap between the two, now we can just tie them together. So now we're gonna come in here. See if I can get this to cut. Okay, and then we're gonna tie these two together and tie those to the output. And then we run that. And so now we see that this is the voltage going up and down. Everything looks good. And we look now at the current going through here and you see that it's not going up to 40 amps, it's going up to 240 milliamps. They're still on a little bit here and you can separate those out, but 240 milliamps compared to the 40 amps, this is on. And we did that again by to show these is that we change them so that they're different periods to fit inside of each other. And so that's how we create this. And then this part here is called a half bridge. And just to review, in order to create the half bridge, we have to create a different level shifter 
for each of the transistors. So this transistor is controlled by this level shifter and this source, and this point here is controlled by this level shifter and this source. So when we go and create our microcontroller, we have to make sure that we create the lag between these two so that they aren't on at the same time. So we have to add some intelligence into our microcontroller to make sure that they're optimized to have the right lag. And this is how we create our half bridge without getting the shoot 